If you have not watched the sermon on money, please go online. When you scroll through the Encounter Church page, it is the one that has this beautiful face. Just keep scrolling. Skip the parts that have Pastor Andrew. And, and you know, the very first one where you see my face, that is the sermon. But I'm so excited once again to be bringing you the word of God. It is such an honor and a privilege. And my prayer is that I will never become familiar with what God is doing here. Because I know that he is going to continue to take us from glory to glory. This is a year of increase and I cannot wait for us to behold it. Today we are going to talk about a topic that is very close and dear to my heart. And it is the presence of God. The presence of God, our true inheritance. In the Old Testament, we see that God walked with the Israelites. You guys know that portion of scripture. The Lord walked with the Israelites in form of a cloud during the day. And a, I like to preach with my congregation. I know you know that scripture. So if I ask her questions, please respond. It is nice for our online audience. The Lord walked with the Israelites in form of a cloud during day and a, and a pillar of fire in the night. And then we move on to the New Testament. In the New Testament, we see Jesus walking in the flesh with his disciples. disciples. He walks on the earth in the flesh. But before Jesus leaves the earth, he promises that he will not leave us as orphans, but he will send us a who will be with us and will also be in us. I believe that we are living at an extremely wonderful time. That we might not have a cloud of fire, a pillar of fire at night, and a cloud, of, and a cloud during day. And we might not have Jesus walking with us in the flesh, but we have something even better. Because you see, Jesus was limited. His flesh, because he was in the flesh, his flesh was limited. He could not be in two places at the same time. And that is why we see that many crowds would go wherever Jesus was. If he was in Galilee, he could not be in Jerusalem. But we live in such a time where Holy Spirit is living inside each one of us. This, you guys, you need to clap for that if you understand what it means. That the people in Western Uganda can experience him. The people in Nachivubo, the people in Natete, the people in Makere, wherever. It doesn't matter. Holy Spirit is always available. And he's not just available to you. He actually lives in you. Meaning that where you're seated right now, where you're watching us online from, whether it is in your car, in your house, wherever you are, you have holy spirit but why is it then that we live like we are orphans why is it that as christians in fact we have such bad rap in this world we have such bad rap we behave as though we are orphans as though the lord in fact the bible is the bible is very interesting there is a reason why certain words are picked and put there. There is a reason why Jesus mentions that I do not want you to leave. You. I don't want to leave you as orphans. In, 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 I will send someone else. And therefore we shouldn't be living as orphans. We should be living as people with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. Now. Not, on, on, not just on a Friday evening. When you live here today, when you go home, he will be with you. In fact, in the scriptures that, that come before that, Jesus talked about the, giving us the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit will be in us. But before that, he says that we will do even greater works than him. We will do the works that he did, but we will also do greater works than him. Because the Holy Spirit is in us. How many of us have done even the, the works that Jesus did? Yeah? Let's not even go to the greater. Just what Jesus did. Child of God. 
That is the expectation from you. So if you have not yet healed the blind, you have not hit the mark. If, when, if, you, are, if you pray for people and they don't walk, the lame don't walk, the blind don't see, the demon oppressed, you have to look for Pastor Andrew. There is a what? There is a problem. We are still living below the mark. We are living as though we are. We are orphans. But I'm here to remind you today that you're not an orphan. That crazy, powerful, explosive power is in you. It is available for you. I believe that since we know that the Holy Spirit is available for us, the game changer then is working with the awareness that he is with us. Practicing his presence wherever we go. When you wake up in the morning, Holy Spirit is with you. When you're deciding what to wear, Holy Spirit is there with you. It is just you that's not aware. It is just you that's not aware. When you are stuck in that traffic jam and the traffic, for, for some of us, traffic jam really gets to us. All the men, praise the Lord. <laughs> when you get on that road and you're about to become crazy on the road, on the road remember that Holy Spirit is where? He's with you. When you walk into that business meeting and you don't know which, which way it will go, you're about to crack that business deal and not, you're not sure if it will go your way. You're going for that job interview and you're not sure if you'll get the job. Remember. Take time to remember that Holy Spirit is where? He's with you in every situation. It, whatever is happening in your life, Holy Spirit cares and he wants to engage with you over everything. Let me share a small story with you. Growing up, and Bananga, please don't laugh at me. I am, I am hoping that there is one of you people that did what I did or what I used to do. Growing up, we had a sugar cane. We had sugar cane behind the house. And when I would get into trouble, there was a little girl in the neighborhood who told me this, that when you get into trouble, you go and find a uh, a sugar cane leaf <laughs> and then you tie the sugar cane leaf and you tell it hmm? and then you're don't laugh at me I know some of you did these things and if you, ha if you have never done them please know that some of us did them you laugh at me but the truth is that that's how some of us behave with the Lord. When we get into trouble, when we are in trouble, when that sickness comes, when the debtors are coming to take your house, when your wife is about to divorce you, when your husband has been unfaithful, then you run to the Lord and you treat him as the Chisubi. And we actually make those promises, Lord, if you do this for me, then I will do this. And, and the truth is that even when the Lord does those things, we don't really follow through with our promises. Because like you, I never, I don't remember ever going back to those. I don't know. I never ever went back to untie them. But that is how we behave with the Lord. We wait to get into trouble. Then we run to him. Then we look for Pastor Andrew. Then he prays for you and you don't even come back to testify. Some of you I have, I overhear the conversations. Some of you, they meet you five months later. And it's like, hey, the last time we prayed, you were going for the job interview. Did you get the job? Yes, yes, Pastor, I got. And it's like, but, but you didn't even come back to give me the testimony. You see? We wait to get into trouble and then we run to the Lord. But that's not the way that it's supposed to be. Let us read together Psalm 27 verse 4. Uh, at a count of three, one, two, three, read. One thing. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. 
Let's go back to verse 4. We see that verse 4 comes before verse 5. One thing, have, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To do what? To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Gomba. To be in the house of the Lord. And the house that we are talking about here is not these, I was going to say four walls, but these walls look like as if but they are circular. It is not here. The house of the Lord is a spiritual place. That I might dwell in the house of the Lord. That spiritual place. That place that goes with you wherever you are. That you may dwell in that place all the days of, the, of your life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And the next verse says. For in the day of trouble. When you dwell in the house of the Lord. When you dwell in that place. That spiritual place of gazing upon the beauty. Then in the day of trouble he will set you free. He will keep you safe in his dwelling. The problem is that for, for a lot of us, we want, we want the safety of the Lord, but we don't want to dwell. We don't want to gaze. Watch together. Eh? We, want, we want the, the present without, we want the blessing without the blesser. It, it seems to take a lot of our time to pray. But we want these things. And when trouble comes, we will make the time for the gazing and the what? But we do it the other way around. Verse 5 comes after verse 4. Don't expect to receive verse 5 without practicing verse, verse 4. And so we gaze on the beauty of the Lord. And in the day of trouble, he saves us. There is a place of spiritual interaction and revelation that is only accessible to you when you are in the presence of God. It is there. Psalm 25 verse 14 says there is a, a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. The problem, again, is that we want the revelation secrets without dwelling in that place, without being devoted lovers of Yahweh. A devoted lo lover of Yahweh is in constant communion with the Lord. Always, not just on Friday and, Saturday and, and, and Sunday. Not just when they call for prayer meetings, at every opportunity. We must take every opportunity to engage with the Lord. Imagine a scenario where... Um, your husband and wife. But the wife only comes to you when she needs something. Is that a devoted lover? No, that is not a devoted lover. We cannot want the revelation secrets without being devoted lovers of Yahweh. Devoted lovers are in constant communion. Not only when they are in trouble. They are in a place of communion always. At every opportunity. You need to be able to just break out in tongues. And pray and speak to the Lord. We, we shouldn't be in a place where we have. Th we have become so spoiled. You guys. A particular song. You know. There is only a particular song that can lead you in the presence of God. If that song is not praying, there's only a particular musician or worship leader. If it is, if it is uh, Roger, when you find Ben, you, you, you cannot connect. You understand? Eh? We, we should not be entitled like that. You should be able to just connect with the Lord because he does not require anything from you. Just open your mouth and speak to him. He's always with you. Always listening. Always wanting to interact with you. He really wants... God wants the best for you, you guys. Whatever thing you think is big, God wants even bigger for you. And he's there wanting to give it to you, but you won't interact with him. There is that secret place. And today I want us to leave this place desiring to become devoted lovers of Yahweh. Because there is a special place that is available to those people. Now, in that secret place, the Lord will do things like warning you about relationships. 
Yeah? Yes. Warning you about certain people. There was a time I was starting a, a relationship with a friend of mine. Or an ex-friend, I don't know if there is such a thing. And I remember the very week that I started interacting with this lady, the Lord showed me in a dream what, what was going to happen. And I remember telling my husband and he said, the Lord has spoken. But do you think I listened? No! I said, no, you know what? Hey, I will pray about it. And the thing ended the way that the Lord had showed me. And when it ended, I had no one to blame except my self. So when you are in that secret place with Yahweh, he will warn you about relationships. He will tell you where to invest. If you're looking for business opportunities, he will tell you where to invest. He will even do little things like telling you which phone calls to make. Who to call, when to call them, how to call them, uh, you know. He gives direction that is as, as simple as that. I remember there was a, a morning I woke up and the Lord, and when I wake up, I go straight to the bathroom. And as, as I was in the bathroom, the Lord told me, text this lady. And I texted her. I said, hey, how are you? And she called me back immediately. She said, I am kneeling on the side of my bed. I have been praying and crying to the Lord because I, I, and I told the Lord, send me someone. Send me someone that I can talk to. Now that you have texted me at this point in time, I know that you are the right person the Lord has sent. Can I meet you today? And that day we met. And do you know what her questions were? She wanted to ask about money. And I am the money girl. <laughs> you know, I was fully equipped to solve her problem. But the two of us interacted in a place of prayer. You know, I was on this other side going about my business, waking up with Holy Spirit. She's also on the other side of the world, waking up with Holy Spirit and the Lord connected us. Now, the Lord, the Lord does such things. When you're in that secret place, he reveals secrets to you. There are meetings that will look to some people as though they are chance encounters, but they are not. They were orchestrated by the Lord. And if you, you guys, if you desire to prosper in this world, because the truth is that I always say that, that poverty is as a result of broken relationships. I always say that. Meaning that the money that you need to prosper is in someone else's. Where? Simon sent us away to go after Yazirina. We, we learned the other Sunday that money won't fall from heaven. The money is in the hands of the people, and therefore, if you have broken relationships, you will not prosper. But that you will not go to that person and tell them, Give me money, and they'll give it to you. But the Lord can orchestrate things. Hmm? The Lord can connect you in ways that you cannot understand. In this country, they say that who you, that who you know is more important than what you know. And as you know me, I completely subs subscribe to that saying. I do because I know the Lord. You know? Mujikubide mungalu. And you too need to subscribe to that line of thought because you know the Lord. You know the Lord. There is not a single person on this earth that the Lord does not know. It does not matter who they are or where they are or where they are, where they are seated. The Lord knows them. And the Lord can turn their heads wherever he pleases. My job is to be in that secret place of prayer so that when I meet that person, the Lord turns their head towards me but if you are not in that place you will miss each other you might be having you might it might be that you're going to meet that person in a restaurant you know and they eat and clear out before you come you both went to the same restaurant but you bypassed each other but the lo you people 
we are living in an era where there is a lot of so self promotion me am a consultant me i do this me i do that me i nzebanange we marketing marketing everywhere the lord will market you the lord will market you because talina gwatamanyi every powerful person in this country in whatever visa office wherever you want favor the lord is there the lord knows those people your requirement is that when that opportunity comes you are ready to seize it but you can only seize it god can only create those connections for you when you are in that secret place of prayer if you are not bidia kuita ko nga the rest of us are what are prospering and so i want to encourage you today do not do not do not do not think small even when you go to the lord do not think small the lord, the lord is able you know he owns gold and silver a thousand cattle on the hill everything in this world belongs to him bulichimuchiche the bible says that faith, seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be added unto you when you seek the lord you don't have to seek people a lot you don't have to when you seek the lord the, the the presence of god will teach you things that are unimaginable i used to suffer with submission yeah a lot i used to suffer with submission a lot now when i serve my husband and he sits down to eat and he eats quickly mm, he eats quickly so by the time you serve yourself and come to see it is like may i have more soup i'm thinking like can't you go and serve yourself the soup you know that, that 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 i've put the dishes i go to a point where i put the dishes on the dining table but he wants you to serve him the soup that is on the dining i'm thinking don't you ever wake up it but the lord can work on you even with such things such things might seem like small things but they are big things you know just the lord helping you to submit to your husband it will take your marriage from here to the year yes because when 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 you, when a wife submits then she gets all the keys in the house as i've told you before me i'm the cfo sentence as a quarter uh, sentence as a quarter but that only came after holy spirit helped me sometimes i would be like and the holy spirit is like touch collar touch ogera sirika wake get up serve him serve him his tea <laughs> pola pola the lord worked on me holy spirit worked on me and i i can't say that i am i am better my husband mm, i am better i am better that in the presence of the lord you will learn to love your children you will learn how to love your husband the lord will make your hands strong for your tasks because if you are going to walk the road of, of prosperity and increase mweta gamani you need to work hard you need to work to to have wisdom the lord will give you wisdom in the book of joshua when when the children of of uh, when moses died and joshua had to leave the children of israel into the promised land god tells uh, joshua that you will inherit the land where you set foot and as as with i was with moses i will also be with you in my opinion i i believe that most people misunderstand and think that the inheritance of the children of israel was just is the land the lord says i will be with you and i will not forsake you so even as we come into the presence of the lord knowing that when we are in his presence we access these revelation secrets of his promises that is not our inheritance our inheritance is the lord the lord says i will be with you and i will never forsake you so your true inheritance is is the presence it is the presence you right now where you are you are richer than you can ever imagine because the presence of god it is rich you guys the bible says that to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord so whether we live or die we are the lords so meaning that when you have the presence of god watuka 
So even in this regard, I do not want us to misinterpret and think that, you know, when we get saved and we receive the Holy Spirit, then we live a, a wonderful life and we have all these blessings. No, 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 no. When you get saved and you receive Jesus, you have received your blessing. He is the blessing. The blessing is not the things. The blessing is the Lord. Because the rest, you guys, the rest is transient. The rest is epithelial. The rest, bifunda. They vanish. Today you have land. Tomorrow you find that Manya, the land title has three owners. And that is gone. Today you have land and when you leave, your children will sell to us. So, your true inheritance is actually not those blessings. It is the Lord. I, I, I really have a problem with the way that we, we talk about prayer in the local language. How do we say prayer in local language? Eh? Oh, kusaba. So, even when we go into the presence of God, Nagamba, nyenze kusaba. No. And because we say that, we mi misunderstand the place of prayer to be a place where we go to ask for things. We go to receive things. And so when you come into a place of prayer, you're, you're, you're thinking, ah, shopping list, point number one, number two, number three, number four. And that is why prayer is hard for some of us. Because you understand, eh? You cannot pray for two hours and you're still asking. If you are there, eh, you, are <laughs> you cannot pray for all those hours and still be asking. And so we need to change our mindset because we have been raised in a culture that calls prayer kusava. When we go into the presence of God, we tend to kusava. And yet, I, as I've said, our true inheritance is not, it is not the things, it is the Lord. So when we go into his presence, we are there to adore him. We are there to honor him. We are there to worship him. When you honor and worship the Lord, in the place of prayer, you memorize scripture, you sing songs to him, you will find that the things that you have to kosaba are very little. Because the Lord knows that you need those things. And because you honor him, and are, I, I cannot remember the last time I asked my husband for anything. No, I don't have to ask. Because I love him, he gives. You get, eh? Because I love, he puts me in charge. I don't have to go to him to ask for Santa Zemviri, some husbands. Eh? I don't have to ask because all of whatever he has is what? Is mine. And so it would be counterproductive for me to go to him and kusava. That is what happens when you are a devoted lover. The things that you pray about, you come into the presence of God and you are in the Psalms. You are in the Psalms. You're reading the Psalms. You're praying through the Psalms. You're memorizing the Psalms. And that is your place of prayer. Because you are a devoted lover of Yahweh. And so if your, your shopping list that you bring before the Lord has been very long, check yourself. Hmm? <laughs> check yourself. Uh, as I conclude... And my husband comes to the front. In conclusion, we have said that we need to create awareness of the Holy Spirit. He's with us always, always. And when we seek him, he will bless us. But our true blessing is actually him. It is not the things. And my task to you today is to become a devoted lover of Yahweh. God bless you. Come on, let's thank God for the word. The psalmist says, the Lord is my portion. Anointing comes by abiding. And abiding is to abide in his presence. That's why religion is very bad. Because religion wants what happened yesterday. 
but the Lord wants to do something what? New. So my prayer for us is that we'll stay in the presence. The picture I use that helped me understand Holy Spirit is how many of you know um, NG is what in English? A dove. A dove is a very sensitive animal. When when you when when you come near a dove, what happens to the dove? It's very sensitive. Holy Spirit, the picture we have of him is a what? A dove. So just imagine every day, every inch of your life, there's a dove on your shoulder. And imagine that you don't want that dove to run away. How would you walk? How would you behave? Holy Spirit is that dove. You will walk with the awareness that there is a dove on my shoulders. Every single moment. I want to walk with that awareness that I'm in his what? In his presence. And anything can what? Can happen. Today's service, we wanted to end it at nine. And we are aware of his presence. So would you bow your heads and just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for your word that says we are lovers of Yahweh. I pray that we who are lovers of Yahweh, who are not glued to traditions, oh, this is how we do it, oh, this is what the other church does, forget it. We are not here to do traditions. We are here to abide in the shelter of the Most High. Every day being aware of your presence. Woe unto us as families. That we will reduce you to a pattern. To a tradition. To the things we used to do. May we never box you. We can't even box you. We are boxing ourselves. You are unboxable. You are God. So I pray at encounter. Indeed like the word you gave us. Encounter. May we every day come to encounter your presence. But above all, may we every day walk, breathe, encounter with your presence. Because we can't have dominion. True dominion comes in the presence. No wonder Adam had dominion with the presence. Because in the cool of the day, you would come and talk to him. Lord, I pray that all of us as encounter, those that are online, those that are seated here, that we will walk in the presence. We will be lovers of Yahweh. That when it's time to pray, we are the first in line. When it's time to fast, we are the first in line. If it's time to study the word, we are the first in line. Lord, like David says, better is one day in the house of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. Now may God keep you, may God equip you, may God reveal himself to you through his word, through dreams, through spending time with him. May the Lord remind you that you are sold out for him and he's yours. I dedicate you to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ever ask or imagine. I thank God for his Holy Spirit that is at work in us to set us free to heal and to deliver as you promised 2,000 years ago. You are the same God today. Even as we depart, I pray that you bless the food we are going to eat, the modokos that do prepare it. We pray that indeed you will expand their territory. We thank you for this Sunday as we start a new series on faith. May this church be built on faith because you said it's impossible to please you without faith. May we be men 
and women of faith. So tonight as we depart to go home, clear the jam, watch over us and our children. In your name, Jesus, we pray and every saint says, Amen. Amen.